Welcome to Remove Before Flight, where we help prepare veterans to start, grow, or scale a business. In this episode, we're going to learn how successful entrepreneurs maintain focus to get work done, and we will discover what entrepreneurial burnout looks like, along with tips on how to avoid it. How did everybody's week go? I know mine was insanely busy. I still have my office studio in shambles. I was able to get part of the studio hooked up enough that I could use some of the equipment to record this week's show. Let me know how we are sounding by leaving your comments at the RBF Nation on Facebook. This week we are going to be talking on some very sensitive topics. And I'll warn you ahead of time that uh, I don't hold back. I keep shit real. So, uh, you know, there's there's no pussyfooting around it. Let's just get right into it. You know, if you don't like what you're hearing, turn it off. I don't care. You know, I've always told you that this show is about keeping the topics out there and letting you know the truth. What, What really happens in this world of entrepreneurship. So, and today, being an entrepreneur can be all-encompassing. You're always on all the time. The danger of living in a world where it is possible to be on call 24-7 is that the majority of your time may be spent fielding phone calls, emails, social media posts, meaning the tasks that you, you wanted to complete remain untouched. But it does not have to be this way. We sat down and spoke with 10 successful entrepreneurs and asked them what strategies do they use to maintain focus and get work done. Tim Chen from Nerd Wallet tells us don't let your inbox take over your to do list. What is his strategy? Each Monday, I prioritize what I want to accomplish that week and then I think about what I've done at the end of the week and share it in an email with my employees called Reflections. It is a great way to make space in your head. Otherwise, your inbox and email becomes your to-do list, which is ridiculous because you didn't create that to-do list. Oliver from ZocDoc's tip, take it one step at a time. I've had the benefit of studying at a Jesuit monastery. We studied complicated text and immersed ourselves, pushing our attention spans to the very limit. It's like meditation that you've learned to direct your thoughts. It's an active skill like working out. Pick something that you wanted to think about and only think about that. Don't let anything else enter your thoughts. Try for five minutes in the beginning and know that like a marathon where you start with just a half mile to begin with, in the end you'll be able to do it for hours once you train for it. One of my favorites comes from Meryl Stubbs over at Food 52. She puts it simple. Get outside. Take breaks. I really step away from something after I've been working on it. Take a short walk. Talk to someone who has nothing to do with what I've been focusing on and stay hydrated. I usually just walk around the office in Manhattan. Now, me personally, I don't do this enough myself. You know, she's she's got it right. Get outside and take a break. Man, I really need to take take advice on that one. (laughs) You know, I really need to get out there and walk around more. How about you? So... Uh, let's see, uh, stay active. That's what Ryan Holmes from Hootsuite tells us. His strategy, like a lot of entrepreneurs, my attention is always pulled in a dozen directions at once. The one thing that really helps me stay focused is exercise. After I jog, do yoga, or get out and do some backcountry skiing, I always come back with more clarity and focus. 
Huh, that's two in a row to tell us. Get out. Go do something. Over at uh, Everbright, Julia Hurts. To meet her goals head on, she does it by embracing challenges and learning from failure. When we set out to build Everbright, we had to face many challenges and come up with creative solutions to get past them. Every time we learned new ways to cope, we became stronger, a more cohesive team. However, staying focused is an ongoing challenge. The bigger you get, the more opportunities you have to take your eye off the prize. Absolutely. Julia, you hit it head on. Dave over at uh, Weebly has a great tip that way too many of us do not do. Put your phone away. His strategy, I personal my I have a personal policy that anytime I'm with somebody at a meeting, dinner, or over a drink, that I never check my phone or watch. And make sure to keep a hundred percent focus on the person. This carries into our meetings. We have a saying at the office during meetings, laptops down, unless you are the presenter. The rule is everyone needs to shut their laptop in the meeting. It allows the person to be physically and mentally present. Another one of my favorites comes from Jeff Chapin over at Casper, and that is solitude. The strategy I have To remove distractions is pretty simple. Headphones and music with no words and an office where there's no people. You know, oftentimes I'll stay up wee hours of the night and find myself being the most productive because I don't have any distractions. I don't have people walking in asking questions, people wanting to know something, the phone ringing, you know, emails going off, just work in general, busyness. You're able to focus on the task at hand and get shit done. B from Hutch uh, has one that relates to the second part of our show this week, and and that's make sure to take care of yourself. She tells us, "Take take care of myself. I'm of no use to anyone or myself if I'm burnt out. The days that I don't get enough sleep or have one too many glasses of wine at dinner make focusing so much more difficult. I end up being less efficient and productive. Absolutely. As you'll find later uh, in this episode as we talk a little bit more on burnout, which is huge, I I highly, highly recommend that you listen through this episode till the end. So, uh, John Zimmer from Lyft deletes distractions how he removed safari and the news app from his phone reducing noise on my phone makes it so that i am in a meeting for example i'm the most focused yeah absolutely you know if if something's pulling you away get rid of it and lastly don't chase every opportunity that comes from bruce punta tip Ugh, sorry guys I'm having quite a difficult time here talking this morning. So uh, Bruce is from uh, G Adventures. This one that I often am guilty of myself leads quickly to burnout. Bruce's strategy, yoga, which I do for my morning routine. Uh, Starting my day with activities keeps me very focused. Also realizing that what you say no to Equally as important as what you say yes to as an entrepreneur. If you achieve any amount of success as an entrepreneur, things come flying at you. Opportunities are everywhere and it's so easy to become unfocused chasing opportunities because they're a dime a dozen. This is something I struggle with constantly and I know many of you out there do the same thing. It is much harder to say the word yes than it is no right if you look at it it's three letters versus no but instead we always have a more difficult time saying those two letters we don't want to tell people no bullshit 
Learn to tell people no. You cannot take on everything and expect to be productive. So I want to hear from you. Are you guilty of some of these traps? Do you have a tip to share, a success story based on one of these? Get over to the RBF Nation and let us know. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash RBF Nation. Entrepreneurs are passionate people. They are brilliant. They are brimming with creative energy and powerful ideas. These are character traits that which energize an entrepreneur's business, inspire others, and turn a profit. But these traits, as valuable as they are, have a dangerous, sharp edge. Passion can turn into multi-passion. Brilliance can turn into burnout. Creative energy can drift into distraction. Powerful ideas can be pushed aside for the next burst of even a better idea. These symptoms share a common diagnosis, lack of of focus the entrepreneur's pitfall is the lack of focus in spite of entrepreneurs visionary proneness and potential genius there can lurk a lack of focus that will destroy even the best of intentions you have so many business ideas but haven't started a single one. That's a lack of focus. You have not one, not two, but 16 brilliant marketing plans and try to pull off all of them. They work only marginally well. Lack of focus. You have six Evernote documents outlining a product to sell or a business to start. You just don't have a plan yet. You're unfocused. You try to add tons of new features to your products, but in the end, up hurting the product. You're not focused. You want to market your product to, well, everyone. Again, no focus. You start each day with so much to do, but ironically have no idea what to start on first. Naturally, you start with email. The day goes downhill from there. Again, this is somebody with very little focus. These are all surface symptoms of a lack of focus. More symptoms can emerge as the entrepreneur fights his way forward. The unfocused approach turns into discouragement, depression, anxiety, and eventually a prolonged fight with failure. The unfocused entrepreneur is on a fast track to destroying his or her business. But to flip it around, the unfocused entrepreneur is a billion-dollar business waiting to happen. By flipping the focus switch to on, any entrepreneur can revolutionize his or her business. A laser-like focus on what truly matters can turn any distracted entrepreneur into a million dollar machine if you work as an entrepreneur long enough you will eventually get burned out over the last 20 plus years of being one i've gotten burned out once or twice okay a few times and in full transparency i will tell you i'm finding myself heading down this path again right now I know my body, I know the signs, yet I sit here for the most part watching it play out in slow motion and doing nothing to stop it. Why are we talking about this today? Because I feel it's important. Burnout is just one of the side effects of being an entrepreneur. It can happen to anyone, even those who are super successful like Sir Richard Branson. I cannot count the number of stressful situations I found myself in since I launched my first business over 50 years ago. The Virgin founder tells us, stress and business go hand in hand. That is not a bad thing. High pressure situations can certainly be motivating, but too much pressure can be emotionally and physically damaging. He's found the best way to manage stress 
is to find a good work-life balance. Richard's tips are 1. Find a routine that works for you. 2. Ditch the guilt. And 3. Have fun. I just, it, it, this topic is, I just, I, I, I freaking hate it that, you know, I, 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 A, gotta bring this up with you, but it needs to be talked about. More and more people just don't talk about the burnout factor. They don't talk about the negative sides of being an entrepreneur. Let me tell you, it's not a, any beautiful path that you go down you you spend years working and working at your business not everybody has this million dollar deal that just falls into their lap entrepreneurs have struggled silently there's a sense that they can talk about it that that they can't talk about it that that it's a weakness bullshit we need to stop that train right there this is a quote that came out of a recent article as i came across gathering some stats for this episode and that's like saying you're a veteran toughen the fuck up and handle that ptsd as you know here on removal for flight we keep it real so we're going to talk about some of these signs that you're approaching burnout so you can prevent breakdown depression or even worse suicide I'm sick and tired of these false mentalities which are drilled into us. As entrepreneurs, we need to stand up and be honest with one another. The only way to grow is to learn from each other's mistakes. I am sick and tired of going to these freaking business networking events or running into another entrepreneur somewhere and we all paint these bullshit rosy pictures that business and life are going so great. We need to stop lying to them, and more importantly, stop lying to ourselves. I am guilty of this myself. In the past, my business would be on the verge of failure, and I would be telling people how great it was going. We need to stop with the bullshit. Take a stand and be honest, and call bullshit when you see it. Okay, okay, back to burnout. While there are tons of signs that you're approaching burnout, there are six common ones number one you're exhausted all the time we all feel exhausted from time to time maybe it was a late night prepping for a board meeting or insomnia from a change in business being worn out once in a while is normal being exhausted all the time is not your if you are consistently Exhausted it is a sign that the business has become overwhelming and taking a toll on you physically. For me, I'm there right now. I've noticed this factor creeping its ugly head over the past couple of months. And it's now at the point where I just say, fuck it, it's a part of life. No, that is not the answer. But we'll talk more about this later. Number two, you're easily overwhelmed. Everyone freaks out on occasion, but if last week's broken Keurig made you upset, you need to start taking it easy. When little things overwhelm you and affect your mood, it's a sign you're under high stress. Yep, got this one too. Hell, just the other morning, the brand new keyboard I put in on the computer was freaking the fuck out and pissing me off. It was obviously a simple issue that one of the keys was probably stuck, but every time I went to type something, I was getting three new internet windows popping up. What did I do? I got pissed and punched the keyboard. Fuck, I had not gotten that frustrated in a long time. What the fuck, Kevin? Yeah, I know, not smart. While it solved the problem, here I am. Three days later, with a hand that is swollen, bruised, and hurts like a motherfucker. Number three, you'll find yourself working around the clock. While you might think this is normal, any sane person will tell you it is unhealthy. If you find yourself working long hours at the office, coming home and doing more work, and spending your weekends working, you're on the path to burnout. Prevent yourself from burning out by setting limits. <laughs> three for three. 
I went from having a healthy sleeping pattern again to out of the blue finding myself up all hours of the night. Increasing days with no sleep. That's right, days. Not good, not good. Number four, you have trouble focusing. If you find it difficult to focus on your work, whether it's avoidance or you just can't stare at the screen long enough to write an email, it's a sign that you've overdosed on work. Not only is focus necessary to get things done, it is important for entrepreneurs who need to make things happen. A lack of focus and vision can send everything crumbling down. Hell, I just spent the greater part of this show discussing issues on focusing. Check this one off the list too. I got it. Number five, you avoid going to work. If making it into the office is becoming more and more difficult, it might be a sign that you're experiencing burnout. You'd rather do errands, stay home, or sleep in. It's time to take a day to clear your mind. Remember that getting your sanity back is worth more than missing a day or two of work. Yeah, I'm not even going to touch this one. Anyone close to me knows this has been showing up again and again over the past couple of months. Yep. Number six. You've forgotten why you're in business. If you're asking yourself how you got into this whole mess, it's probably not a good sign. The daily stress of running a business can take a toll on even the best entrepreneur. If you've lost your fire, it's definitely a sign that you're experiencing burnout. At times, I've questioned why exactly I'm in business. However, I always think back to how I started, and sometimes this helps me refocus and gain control. A business can often grow arms and legs, making it hard to contain and manage. Sometimes you'll find that thinking back to how it all got started helps to refuel that initial fire. For entrepreneurs, burnout can mean the downfall of the entire organization. Learning to spot the signs to help you avoid a burnout that you cannot fix. So whether it's a financial rut, cash flow woes, staffing issues, we're all affected by our businesses. Entrepreneurial burnout is real and dangerous. A serious burnout can be detrimental to your business and your life. Surround yourself with people who are supportive of both the business and you personally. Family and friends are your biggest supporters. Listen to them when they tell you to take a break. They're probably right. If you are not listening to your own body, you should at least be listening to your family. Oh, man, am I guilty of that. I'm constantly told, hey, take a time out, take a break. And I'm like, no, 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 just five more minutes, five more minutes, five more minutes. And then hours go by. Although it may seem impossible to fix burnout, remember that a little break or a change can make all the difference. Take a few days off. Focus on yourself. Go on a weekend vacation. Whatever you decide to do, you'll know that you'll be refreshed and ready to tackle everything when you come back. And lastly, do not be afraid to reach out if you need help. Use the buddy system. Hell, call me. I have been there. And as you just heard, I'm heading there again. The whole reason I even chose this topic for this episode was because I've learned to listen to my body and watch for the warning signs. And I'm telling you this so that you can learn what you need when you need to take a break. Burnout sucks. I'm guilty of overbooking myself and saying yes all the time. Learn to take care of you first. Learn to say, no, it is okay. 
Do me a favor. If you recognize these signs in someone you know, a friend, a coworker, or a loved one, share this episode with them so they can reverse the issue before it becomes a big problem. Step in and tell them, take a break. No, it won't be easy. And no, they probably won't listen to you at first. But you will be happy to save them before depression hits. And even worse, you're attending their funeral. So how do we take steps to help prevent burnout? Here's some suggestions. They're just ones I'm throwing out there. Morning workouts. It'll energize you. It'll make you feel good about yourself. An evening walk for that same reason. You know, I could go into all the technicalities and the chemical reasons, you know, what the endorphins do in your body and all that. But this isn't what that show is about. A day a week with no work. Nothing. None. Zip. Zilch. No work. Find an intellectual hobby. Celebrate your small wins. A healthy diet. Lord knows I could use one of those. A yearly unplug. Plan a week every year just to go somewhere and unplug yourself. No phones, no computers, no internet. Go relax, go chill. Build that energy back up in you. Have a cheering section. Reward yourself. Create a schedule and stick to it. Just say no. That's a huge one right there. Just saying no. Make time for you. Unfortunately, I I did not have enough time to include our wrap up to the content section in our SEO series this week. We will get to it soon. Probably a couple episodes before you'll hear it, before we get back into it. Some of you may be enjoying that, that you want to break from SEO. I felt that this topic at hand was more important to discuss. Next week, we'll have a couple of guests in studio joining us for some crazy chatter about life and who knows what else. Before we go, I I do want to share something else with you this week and, and get your feedback as well. Do you find this show brings you value? Are the topics what you want to hear? Can we improve? Want us to discuss a certain topic? Please give me your feedback. On average, I spend 5 to 10 hours in producing each week's episode. I know, crazy right, to bring you like 30-40 minutes worth of content Requires research, planning, writing up the episode, recording, editing, creating the final audio, which then needs to be tagged and uploaded to the server. Show notes need to be written to go with the audio file on Libsyn, and the show notes page needs to be created on the website. Oh, and then there's graphic design, too. Time is then spent to promote the show afterwards via social media. So in order to ensure we are delivering the best content possible, I need to hear from you. Email me, kevin at kevinfairbanks.com, or leave your comments at the RBF Nation, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash RBF Nation.
Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any great content. And be sure to leave us a review on iTunes. All right, everybody. It's time to wrap up this show and get out of here. Life is short. Don't just dream. Do. We will see you next week on Remove Before Flight. Thank you for listening.